draft prepared or you just simply like pain. So one of the two is going to be true here for BTG. But again, they played a lot better than expected yeah. in game number one, all things considered. We have Mayev banned out once more by Gen.G as we did in the previous map. So far the bans are exactly mirroring game number one. So far indeed, but once again, this is a map where immortal races can become <laughs> more important. So I noted down the, the bans earlier in the previous series, and I'm currently looking at the draft again, and I actually noted down, instead of Genji, I wrote down Rich. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Well, we are going to be seeing the second ban coming in for Genji, and it's going to be Hanzo. Once again, this time finally adjusting. The mortal races are so important on this map, so seeing that banned out, not surprising. And speaking of another one, the potential for Exterminator getting removed. If not, then Rain is still just soft. The one thing that I actually was a bit surprised in, and as we're just talking about Rain, and maybe Jiggle, if you have an answer to that. Currently, from a European perspective, like all of us were very much surprised that we have such a huge priority into the human armor on level 4 for Reyna. Is that yeah. something that you guys have seen throughout the entire season? Because I really haven't picked up on that. I watched quite a bit of Korea, but it's never something that stood out on me. Because for us, it was all about fight or flight, and I thought mm -hmm. I saw that in Korea too. But right now, this is like the third game, I think, where Korean teams are picking the armor. Yeah, we actually have a lot of armor. It depends on what they're against. The uh, how long the game is going to go, and yeah. by individual decisions of the uh, of the player that's going to be playing Rainer, I think it depends. But armor seems to be the way to go. You can actually survive a little bit more with that extra HP. I think that's the reason why. You get an immediate boost as well. It's definitely an immediate reaction against damage over time, the extra health, whereas the armor is good at protecting its burst. Like you said, it can be very reactionary. China, we also see a fair amount of behemoth armor as well. With Deckard making it into the match, we finally see Karazim coming out from Gen G this time and some extra poke damage with that Li Ming. Li Ming has been the pick to go all the time from Yisa. Getting, yep. of course, getting the critical mass, which gets his, himself back every single time he gets a kill. <laughs> and it's just, no, unless you, because BTG was going to be banning uh, either Li Ming or something else, he just picked it up before. With Phoenix Karazim, they, they have a huge hero pool to banning. Garros actually does not really hurt Gen G in any out because this has so big of a hero pool. I really like the ban though, because if you have a Karazim already on the other side, then you're always in danger of seeing Diablo just flipped over into a seven-sided yeah. strike. And then with Li Ming and Phoenix in the background, that's usually a insta blow up. That's something that especially Tempo Storm experienced in one of the series they played at the Western Clash, where they just got blown up over and over again. I think Cursed Hollow was the map, where exactly that combo was used again against them multiple times. So the draft that we have from Jinji's side is already extremely terrifying when it comes to, first of all, a race and then also just damage output in general. The Rel makes it in, was completely ignored in the last game and finally makes it in this time. This is something though that BTG have sort of leaned away from. They haven't brought it out much yet. LLK would usually be the person to play that, but we don't see it. Three, I believe, played it a little bit, but, uh, but once again, he is not the person here. So it's either going to be LLK adjusting or we are seeing Loctar once again flexing onto that melee roll. Also cool, down picked up by BTG and oftentimes when there's a mage that doesn't really have a, too much of an escape and uh, we do see the Haka picked up because the Haka can just come in from the side, harass the backline making sure he does not uh, go down put up any any damage to Genji yeah. when they are diving in. They love to have that pressure in. That's very interesting. So the Tigers very much seems like an LLK hero, but so does the Ghoul Dan. Neither of these are actually dancing heroes. He has not played them this season at all, so he is adjusting, but it is going to be dancing on that Ghoul Dan. I actually like that Tigers is one of those heroes that we always expected to come a bit more into the meta since we have such a tank heavy meta where especially Muradin, Diablo and Garrosh are primary heroes. But a lot of teams that you ask, they just feel that Tigers falls a little bit short compared to other damage dealers yeah. that you can bring into the draft right now. But just simply looking at his trade, he should do well in the meta. And now seeing him against Muradin on the other side, I like that quite a bit. If they can control Muradin and just force him back, then they can maybe force Genji to be a bit, bit more on the back foot. But again, you mentioned the Haka earlier. If you play well around the global towards the level 10 spike and can grab that earlier heroic ability, that's oftentimes where the game then starts to snowball for you. Yeah, they have so many setups for Li Ming with that drag, with that storm bow. I'm very scared for any of the members of uh, BTG as they also. Deckard doesn't exactly 
really match the burst protection style when you're protecting against the Li Ming. Yeah, again, just like BTG, for just like CE, how they use the Irel aggressively not to actually protect their backline. If BTG actually used that Irel to protect the backline, like the Gul'dan and the Tychus, if they can put out that maximum damage they were supposed to against Murden, who will be jumping in very aggressively from Tust, I think they all actually have a very good chance of taking at least few kills or even winning the team fight. It's very early team fight. They don't really have the best race potential, I don't think. But if they win the team fight and then take the Immortal, I think that's, a, of course, a way to win, win the game. Uh, sorry, percentage not shifting that much here in favor of either teams, like maybe a percentage point either way. What did you say? I'm a little bit torn on Gul'dan. This is really the one hero where I'm looking at the draft and I'm saying, okay, what are you going to get out of this? In, uh, even if it comes to uh, any kind of mage damage, I could have seen them more so with the Jaina or anything else that really would work here. Because with Gul'dan, yes, you have Pogue as well available to you, but oftentimes it's a priority on Wave Clear, which is why we are seeing him more on Tomb of the Spider Queen or on Infernal Shrines. So for, and even there he has fallen off. So for this map, I'm curious how much value they can get out of the pick. As am I, but luckily we do not have to wait to find out as we are heading into game number two of this best of three. It's going to be BTG versus Gen G on Battlefield of Eternity. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, spawning on the left-hand side, representing China, looking for a win. It is beyond the game of Heroes of the Storm. And it's going to be dancing. Coming in on that Ghoul Dan, it is Healer, please, on that Deckard Kane. 619 on Diablo, locks are on Tychus, and LOK is on your L. And on the right, Generation Gaming, number one from Korea. Five, you have Sake four, on Kerosene reset three, on Leeming, Rich two, on Phoenix this time. Kyocha on the Haka, just on that Murder. This is the first time me and you have cast together in general, and it could not be more perfect with a Chinese team versus a Korean oh. team. Yeah. It could not be more ideal. However, it's going about how we might have expected with Gen.G being the Korean team in the game. But BTG, as Carol said, it's one of the better games China put up. They had some good kills. Let's see if they can repeat the performance, maybe even pick up First Blood again. But we have a double lane for Gen.G in the top lane. They do want to make sure they pressure in Irel a little bit. So they to get the pressure. So Gul'dan has to make that rotation because oh, yeah. Irel, though very strong hero, can do the output of two heroes at the same time. Muradin, so therefore he just simply jumps away. And yeah, we see already Rich losing all of his shield, but it's the joy of Phoenix. You can juggle and use your uh, shield to trade efficiently against enemies. You can see though Gul'dan had no issues with this. He was able to do that poke damage and then immediately heal up via the minions. Because of that, they were actually engaged. They knew the rotation, Dancing. but dancing, he was actually way too far in front, getting the heals back from Rich, but that's He's not going to be for such a long time. Let's get Root. They're so getting it. Rich. Let's go down. That's a kill. great trade for BTG. Healer, please. He can't heal himself. Potion not ready. LLK is still going hard, though. In comes 619. But Sake, with that extra speed from Iron Fist, is able to escape. We just had a lot of chance to escape, but. Actually, he'll look really pleased. Having the perfect route so he does not actually escape out of that. Yeah. He's been a great member of a team so far. Only, only two games in. I'm very surprised at how well he's actually playing as Stu Cobb in first game and Deckard already. He just found out he was playing for this team yesterday when we found out that the original substitute power could not make it. Mm -hmm. So as such, he has had no warning, no practice with this team, has shown up today and is putting on a show. I like this guy. PTG with the cooldown as Kado was questioning that a little bit. And you're sure. Round two. Tigers went down in the bot lane, so instead they're turning for Rich and another trade. One for one this time though. Rich feeds. <laughs> and that's what happens. Not a sentence you hear very often, <laughs> Rich feeds. As we see it, Genji though still taking control of bot lane. Bottom Kazaras with Tykus down. No one is soaking XP there. No one is defending this. This is going to be a big XP loss for BTG as Genji have already rotated back up the top lane. With the Haka, they also have the global control, okay. and I think their rotation actually starts with. As we have the Immortals coming out very soon, we'll have the camp, and look at that, even Tiss just spotting, understanding the timing, there was no one doing camp at the moment, so Genji can just go ahead and try to put out the damage. They will have some extra time. So, using that yeah. information because Tiss could just go around a little bit. 
Tigers didn't actually miss that much XP and has been able to stay in this bot lane in time to clean up that Kazara camp, as has Dahaka very nearly in top lane. Both these lanes will now be empowered in reverse by those fallen shaming camps as the objective starts, and Li Ming does what Li Ming does, and that is poke consistently. Quick cool down, BTG. We'll have the late game damage, but yeah. we're talking about late game again. The yep. Chinese teams are <laughs> looking for that late game a lot. And it often oh. works. Interrupting the warp, where's the body block? They are beautiful. Root lands and Rich goes down again. The kill count finally evened up, and for the first time, a Chinese team has a level lead. This is actually what uh, some of the some of the Korean players actually, the reason why they do not like to f play Phoenix. Warp has, it oh, actually takes up. some time to actually warp out, and there are so many roots and less cleanses now in the game. Get caught just like that easily oftentimes, and BTG is picking off the right target all the time. And yet, even a person down, they are going aggressively here. Dancing has eaten so much damage, but the root is good, Ooh. and Karazim goes down. BTG turning it up right now. They will get the halfway show, and that's gonna force Kyojo, who is hovering around looking for a snipe there to back up. He does not want to get himself caught out. Mm, that was also 6 on 9. Great, because once oh, Leeming yes. gets that reset, he was going to get multiple kills as they had very low HP members. He charged onto Leeming, making sure Leeming was out of the actual team. But Kerosin dived in alone, thinking that reset would follow him, did not really connect, and that was a super play, I would say. Here is the first Chinese Immortal as they're gonna look to make a play here. BTG needs to be careful. 619 getting treasured as is Healer Blitz. Ooh, Good or And 619 gives his life for the cause. He knew his team was in trouble. Locked up though. Came Second back one. in. I think they thought they could make a play, but they are gonna get Third. absolutely wrecked for their insolence. Trying to make it fourth, but goes over the nice. wall, reset. So much poison. They're so still looking poison. for kills right <laughs> next to the wall. <laughs> Yes, uh, Simoto still walking there as. But wow. this one will just maybe open the game, but that's going to be basically it. Then you follow them, even though they were going to. They needed some time to actually go back to Immortal, but they, were, they got a lot more experience value because yeah. they got the kills and three kills with you. That XP lead just kind of evaporated right here as we see that Immortal taken out. It only got a tower and a gate, but there are some weak towers in this bot lane. BTG going to pick up the Impaler Camp. And looks like they're gonna try and grab a little bit more XP here. Mirrored by Genji, grabbing the Impalers in the top lane. They wanna put some counter pressure on. Towers up here, a little bit healthier as well. I think that almost maximum range orb on four oh members God, of BTG just horrid. destroyed them. Sometimes it's just good to soak in that one damage, maybe yeah. just Diablo just. Yeah, like, just back up. I mean, hit instead. I mean, also the fact that Loctar reacted after 619 went in. They altered the damage, just a terrifying amount of damage. And 619 is like, okay, yep, I'm going to try and be a distraction. But he ends up with his team reacting. So potentially a communication issue with the players who do not play with each other that often. Man, because they got oh my. dancing is caught and Kerazim goes in, dashes in. Iron Fist for the extra damage. But so survive for such a long time, gets a trading kill. Has a reset for Leeming and Loctar does oh, survive. What a save by Healer, please! And Loctar is able to back out here. A one for one, but the health bars so in favor of Gen G. They're looking for more, but that's D by Kyocha. In comes Sake from the side. Look at the pressure. LLK is your relic and keeps alive, eating once again all of those hits. The 619 looks for anyone to step over once he has that domination back. Even without that, they managed to survive. And Healer Please actually playing oh, a okay. great amount of Rich getting called once again, but this war about this time, the pair of GC did not connect perfectly. Saki, he goes in for looks for the kills, but he does have to manage to escape as well, so he doesn't really have the dash stacks for himself. Unless he gets the kill, he's not really completing the mission, which uh, brings a lot of power spike down for reset to actually uh, complete with the critical mass. The BTG has been sustaining so well with a yeah. teammate that, does, that is who is actually not in the team. They're That's incredible. Great. They are doing absolutely fantastically here. VTG putting up some of the best showings. But level 10 is now available for Gen G. That seven-sided strike is going to add so much more burst than that isolation to assist with that as well. BTG, they're just approaching level 10s, but because of that, they had to give up a huge chunk of that immortal health, so they were gonna really struggle. Unless they choose to fight 5v5, as level 10 has now finally been hit, but they are a little slow, as we do see that immortal dropping down even more. Genji, though, not wanting to take that 10 versus 10 fight yet. Yeah, as Gleaming was clearing up the top wave, just coming in to Root. join the fight Good now. 
So this is a good bait by Kyocho, just diving in. The sleep delays, reset, and Sake here as they're being forced to back out, though the damage is good. Locked up in that Odin form, dropping some good damage. They're sharing the seven-sided damage, so they can do it. Orb, Orb is dodged this time as Locked up pressures onto them again, but this time everyone was able to disengage. And BTG, they just got the shields off the Immortal for the first one because it was on the left on their side. Yep. The P10. They did some damage as long as, long as they can take a member down of Genji. They're focusing on the one. Just this time. Made a wave of force to get that knockback, yes. That was great. The meme. This is a four versus five, remember, as to Hawk is in top lane. They still pick up a kill. Four versus five. Gen G wade across with Kyocho rotating in from top lane with the burrow. They're looking for their third kill here in this fight. LOK barely survives, gives the armor to 619, and 619 makes it so it's only a two for zero. It was a scary moment as BTG was losing their positioning. I think they were a little bit too aggressive. Yeah. For the fact that Genji was Genji also had the part to counter attack really hard and Taika's being a little bit off position, Genji found the right target. We said always looking for that massive damage with the first with the missiles and the orb together. That's going to be a big shielded immortal coming into the bottom lane. Yorel has gone back top to continue to soak. BTG need to stay in the soak game. They can't just take these team fights and hope. It has to be about these reactions. So now, big shield immortal. What is the reaction from BTG? Their best hope. They have some really good stuff here with dancing, especially. And of course, cooldown dancing has to get the stacks only on 19 right now. To be a little half. So. His mission to actually get the stacks here as much as possible. The Odin is a very good tool for this. Tis forced back, 619, gets seven sided stroke. He dove so deep here. Clutch heals, uses his unstoppable to remove the slowest. Down goes the lead. Big Horrify is beautiful. And this does not Megan looking for the kill onto Phoenix. Does get the kill. Turn that around with all of the help from the Dr. Kane as well, Tis. Get him. Oh, that jump and the pull as well. He doesn't have the avatar save. as well, so he was actually trying to bait one of the targets if it was possible, that, but they don't really have too much damage. Already used seven sided strike. Yep. It would have been a risky bait. He was a little low. Diablo burst with all that follow up could have been scary, but in any case, they baited them in, nearly got a good pull in. Overall, though, that is still going to be the entire front wall down and well, the tiniest bit of damage onto the, the keep. But that was one of BTG's best fights yet. yet we have not seen it was a very cool turnover as Diablo was focused fire. They knew they were focusing, so instead yeah. they would do their own damage instead of kind of saving Diablo. That was all Healer Police's job, actually, to keep himself alive. And the potion, sometimes you, it's really hard. You try to heal. The potion actually does not go perfectly all the time because some... Mm. Your ally can actually take it by mistake all the time, but he actually throws in a position where he will, will be healed at the right target all the time. Did a good job. There was also a really good sleep. It was very short timing, and the Horrify especially coming in from Dancing was on point to set that up, and it's just come off cooldown. Everything is off cooldown now with the Odin up as well. And level-wise, it's still basically a full level lead for Gen G, but BTG, they're gaining mo they're gaining ground here and there. But unfortunately, while they're gaining little tiny bits of ground, tiny towers, Gen G have been gaining force after force. Uh -huh. But they can turn that around by soaking a little bit. They're still on the same talent, only a level lead for Gen G. And they do have yeah. Tigus, and so far, this could not be as aggressive as he is usually because of that Tigus percent damage is kicking in with Minigun all the time. He was also even pressured from extra CC at the beginning, not as much after the Avatar, but still he takes a chunk of damage from Tigus to be a, a pressuring tool all the time. They're moving in. Dahaka is in this bot lane. He's not showing. He's finally going to move out for some XP. No, he's actually still hiding for XP. But he wanted to react in case the engagement went on fully. And now, thinking about it, but 619, just a bait there. They do there see no Kyoja down there now. And are they fully making a rotation on the rel? Goes in for the soak because the immortal is actually onto the other side. You have to slowly push in, making sure they have vision. Because they, I don't think they, no, they do. Know. Maybe they do not know where Tust is at the moment. I don't know if they do or not, because Tigers is sticking quite close to them. Now they do, demounting and revealing Tist there. We're seeing Rich hovering around C619 with his cheeky wraparound plays. Locked out, it's a little bit of damage. Quick potion pickup. Kyosha continues to push in. Here comes the salvo. 619 must be focused as the Horrify interrupts that, actually, as Dahaka arrives. Tist forced to back up. 
They baited Odin though. That's but Odin and Horrified with no kills acquired. That is a pretty efficient move by Gen G. And immediately you see Lockhart trying to burn down the Immortal with this Odin. Needs to gain value out of it. Yeah, they certainly do, and their oh hooks final on dear. Diablo once again. Silence then. That's gone Diablo. Frontline gone, which means they can just engage into any line only. Oh, okay, we'll be providing some heal, but get that Bravo. dancing. Getting all the soaking damage from Li Ming. Tychus and Locke. Tychus is trying to stay alive. Drag is good. Minions arrive. Sleep will buy a tiny bit of time, but too much AoE damage wakes everyone up. Locked up. Pulls back and survives, actually. Everyone's under keep right now, but there's still there's no more minions here as they get the reset onto Gul'dan and look for more. Locked is so low and is taken out. Nice. Just cashes out. LLK tries to, tries to look for the target, but a little bit too late as Denji would find Diablo once again. Fighting underneath the fort <laughs> with no minions. They were able to chase him down. That is a quadruple kill for Gen G. They are looking solid. Halfway point is rich. Tiny bit of time for BTG to respawn, but they're going to be defending keeps. They do have the massive heart spike with 16, and that That's was the reason, true. also the reason why they could do a lot more damage in the first time. And they're going to get this immortal for free because because of that right after the team by BTG. They were risking put before 16. That they had some chance, it was risky, but they took the chance to didn't really get too much value out of it, but I think it was a good timing to engage. Everyone back up, BTG, they're still alert, they're still two levels and an entire talent tier behind. I don't feel good about the keeps off beyond the game as Gen G are gonna be looking to push into this top lane. That's just was always looking. He's, he should be the one that's been sitting in Rich's position, but because Rich is kind of scared because he died so many times against the CC. Never mind, yeah. he's not scared dancing away. <laughs> <laughs> he does back up. He survives, though. Everyone is fine as we see that Ancient Blessings drop very early here so they can try and poke down and burn down this immortal very quickly. Odin, even being dropped to siege this down, they want to avoid the engage by Genji. So the best move there is to zone out and fight from further away, but Tiz dives deep. With the Dwarf launching, he can certainly dive deep all the way to the cooldown line, but he's not taking too much damage. Uh, uh -oh. This Moto is pretty, still pretty strong. There is a good Arden Defender. The stay of one listen gets only a little bit of value as Tist is just all the way in the back line, pressuring Dancing, but Dancing gets out. Now Tist in danger here. LOK applying that armor, but he gets wiped. And that's going to be the Ooh. first one. Li Ming dives a little bit too deep alone at the time. Maybe he thought he would see the lethal Before. there, but then he's already back in the zone. Good pull in onto that Diablo 619, taking a lot of damage, buys himself some time. In the meantime, the Immortal is on the court. A drag on Tychus, he is very squishy. Down he goes, speaking of squishy, Gordon is removed. And with the Immortal standing tall, this is gonna be it, G Clef. Don't think about going back home 619, that's what Kyut just says, and does get the manage. The entire team wipe as the core goes down. That's a clean 2-0. Nicely done by Gen G. Slight signs of life from beyond the game, but not enough to shut down the juggernaut that is Gen G. 14 kills in two oh, games, yes. though, against Gen G. A little bit more than we expected, I would say. Yeah, a lot more than I and expected. I mean, to be honest, when we look at this, BTG straight up won a couple of team fights on even lower, which was really surprising here. And. I don't, it's always tough in the first round to really how much you can value these games, but let's be honest here, if Gen.G wants to win the tournament, they definitely have to step it up. I think though they were not clean for sure, and yep. they were losing way too many Rich in game two, way too many uh, Kyocha in game number one. I think they were trying to take it easy, maybe just to warm yep. up, just get a feeling of what's like to be on stage in Korea. Well, of course, they haven't been on that stage for such a long time in Korea with all the crowd cheering for them as well. So maybe they just felt some pressure. Maybe they were trying to take it, take this one a little bit easier, a little less serious, I would say. I mean, Rich in particular tried to find the line and he found it a couple of times and stepped very heavily <laughs> over it. So <laughs> it, it was an aggressive Phoenix style that we saw from him. Let's yeah. put it like that. Speaking of stepping over the line, though, we've got to talk about stepping above and beyond the two substitute players for BTG. P uh, Healer, please. Korean Open Division player definitely would not have expected to be here today, but he showed up and he performed really well. Yeah, no, he definitely did, and the entire team. Again, we talked about this after the first map. Very surprising how cohesive they look as a unit, considering the little amount of time they had to practice. 
<laughs> well, too much lunch? No, we got new cookies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got new cookies in the back. And they have oh, like yes, you have been They have almonds those sprinkled on those, so oh, one of them is trying to murder me right now. <laughs> well, you still survived, and talk about the coordination. I believe they were uh, was just uh, using English as a global language. We didn't really ah. see too many pings. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing they had to get... They had to get some kind of communication in between them. There was some good coordination, great place for the s from the sport to actually keep themselves alive. I think he's filling in and filling in really great. Alufo actually was like the weak link of the team Ooh. as well, yeah. I would say. So I think it's actually not a bad idea to have him here as they played pretty well against Genji. I mean, Alufo plays for CE. So oh, never, never, <laughs> never, 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 never. <laughs> But overall, that was a really good showing, but Genji, like you said, there were a couple mistakes there, and their next opponent is either going to be the one, or it's going to be Ballistics. How do you feel about their chances after that? I still don't know how to value this. For me, Ballistics is actually also quite interesting, because they had a, from a Korean perspective, they had a really embarrassing performance at the mid-season brawl, so this isn't a chance for them to redeem themselves on an offline stage. I mean, obviously, we already had the Korean season, but still, I feel from their view, they need to redeem themselves here to an extent at the tournament. So they're going to come in with a lot of firepower, really trying to step it up from the get-go. But I also believe that the same is going to be true for Gen G, that they're going to step in with a very, very different mindset and a different attitude than they did just now. Jigzef, what do you think? Oh, I think it is going to be a very similar in trend, I would say. But it may be a little bit different as Ballistics has been struggling a lot in the meta. They were possibly, I actually thought for a few days at least, maybe Blossom can actually outplay Ballistics. It, it could be possible with Mary Day on Connor diving in. Ballistics, yeah. they were having some lots of SCSC hero pool problem. I think that may carry into the Eastern Clash, actually. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we are going to send you over to a winner's interview with Gen G. And I am joined here with Gen G's very own reset, uh, coming off of a victory there against Beyond the Game, as the crowd, you know, very much cheering here with the home favorites here. But I got to go ahead and ask about that crowd there, reset. How does it feel to perform internationally at an international tournament? Excuse me, at in front of a Korean crowd, in front of the home turf. 어 이런 국제적인 대회를 한국 팬들 앞에서 하는 기분이 어떤가요? 어 사실 한국에서 한다는 것 자체가 좀 많이 영광스럽고 이제 이스턴이 전부 다 외국에서 열렸었는데 이번에는 한국에서 열려가지고 음, 많이 좋은 것 같아요. So Eastern Clash has always been held outside of Korea. It, I think it's a huge honor that it's held in Korea, and I'm, I'm really glad for it. Yeah, it's really awesome that we do end up having that here in South Korea. It's awesome to be able to visit. And uh, one thing I've got to ask as well is looking back at that last series, especially at game number two, a lot of people did not expect it to be nearly as competitive as it was. Can you give some thoughts as to maybe why that, or excuse me, that game was a little bit, you know, closer than, again, many we expected? Uh, the 어 저희가 이제 첫 세트에서 많이 좀 많이 들, 뛰기고 난 다음에 들떴어요. 그래가지고 좀그 분위기를 주차하지 못하고 많이 들뜬 상태에서 게임하다 보니까 좀 많이 힘들게 갔던 것 같아요. So after winning a uh, first set with huge gap, uh, we, we got a little too excited, and I think uh, that might have ha uh, had us a little over overconfident for second set. Uh, that, you know, understandably so here again, especially with the crowd that you guys end up having here. But I've got to ask, not only with the honor of having, you know, the Eastern Clash in South Korea, but then also it's one of the few titles that Gen G do not have under their belt. Do you feel any pressure or any uh, extra emphasis on trying to earn this Eastern Clash for Gen G? Uh, 아까 한국에서 Eastern Clash 가 어, 이스턴에 대한 좀 부담감 같은 거는 딱히 없고 오히려 요즘 이스턴에 대한 그 2등이 이제 블리즈컨을 먹는다는 그런 게좀 있다 보니까 그냥, 그냥 부담감 없이 좀 편하게 하고 있어요. So I don't feel much of a pressure and I I looking back the, at the history I if you 
make it to second place in Eastern Clash, you make it to BlizzCon. So I think uh, overall, I don't feel much pressure. Looking for the long victory there with the BlizzCon, understandably so. And congratulations on the victory there against BTG. Uh, we have more action here for the HTC Eastern Clash. As up next, we are going to have, excuse me, it's going to be Ballistics taking on the one out of China. Uh, so we're going to go to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, more HTC.